first of all, then, Brexit's about democracy. That's a crucial test. As we all know, the few reliable polls about the drivers of the referendum result show that the most important reason behind it was to ensure that decisions about Britain are taken in Britain. Obviously, that's a slightly simplistic formulation. Every country is affected by external forces, clearly, um, especially a very open one like Britain. So I would phrase it more precisely to, to me something like to ensure that decisions about the laws in force in Britain are taken in Britain, that decisions about international commitments are made with the consent of the UK government, and that British institutions are sovereign within the UK. And that's what we sought to achieve the Boris Johnson government in delivering Brexit after the middle of 2019, and it is, I think, what the government is still intending to do. So the description I've given is, of course, a description of the legal regime prevailing in most countries in the world. Only in Europe is it regarded as an eccentric thing to think that countries can manage their own affairs and relate in a constructive and open way with others uh, without depriving themselves of self-government, without sharing their sovereignty, without accepting some degree of formal supervision from outside the borders. And it's a pity that that's regarded as an eccentric view in Europe, because my view is that national democracy and the nation state are not just the normal way, but the best way of organising a country's affairs. Where people have political debate, where they talk openly and honestly about the trade-offs between different options, you get different levels, better levels of engagement in politics generally, you get greater buy-in to the results. I think we are beginning to see this in Britain. Look at an area like trade policy, uh, hitherto highly technocratic, run by lobby groups focused on Brussels rather than London, but I think now much more the subject of debate in our own parliament. With